a plea from the foreigners and civil organization groups in South Africa. Over the years, I've covered xenophobic stories, and to reflect back at this, these are some of the stories. This was in 2019. Police seemed to be outnumbered again as protesters against foreign nationals ran amok in Tarnfontein, south of Johannesburg, looting shops believed to be of foreign nationals. Elements of criminality we do see, but the major issue is social economic issues in South Africa. The time has come, South Africa has a serious dialogue about the economic situation that South Africans are finding themselves in. I'm not feeling happy or the way uh, our African people see their brothers as their enemy. As their enemy. Anyway, it's painful of what is happening here this morning. This was the second outbreak in less than 12 hours of rioting. Earlier, protesters had clashed with police in Gibstown, Malvin, where they looted and damaged properties. They can even beat our South African police, but they respect their policies in their countries. South Africans, they cannot go out of the country without papers, but other people, they can come inside our country without valid papers. How can they be so mean? Instead of them waking up in the morning to go and work, they want things that are for free. This is not good at all. However, as the wave of mass looting and violence continued across South Africa, many foreigners were left displaced and some injured during clashes. Some of the foreign nationals pleaded with their government representatives in South Africa to intervene. Our government must see what to do about this thing that is happening today. So you can see we managed to take some things out of the shop. You can see other shops here around. All of them are broken and take everything in the shop. Violence in South Africa against foreign nationals has increased over the years. United Nations earlier this year condemned reports of escalating violence against foreign nationals in South Africa. They called for accountability. According to reports, xenophobic violence and criticism have increased, including under the banner Operation Dudula, who are mobilizing violent protests targeting migrant homes, businesses, and even murder of foreigners. They are committing human trafficking, uh, car hijacking, uh, they are doing robbing, syndicate, and it is difficult for the state, to the law enforcement agencies, to identify them because we don't have the fingerprint of those illegal immigrants. So they must go home. They, they must bring scarce skills because the skills that they are bringing are skills that we as South Africans can provide. But instead, we are sitting at home being unemployed. However, in contrast to popular perceptions, immigration is not associated with reduction of unemployment as some groups of foreigners increase employment opportunities. There is no country with a monopoly of good or bad people. There are good people everywhere and there are bad people everywhere. I've met amazing South Africans, and I've met terrible South Africans, and I've met amazing Nigerians, and I've met terrible Nigerians. So having said that, all right, the truth remains that we are contributing to the economy. I mean, the survival instinct of an African child is to be able to put food on the table. Now, if you are willing to survive in an, economy, in an economy such as this, you have to devise a means that is legal and proper. I mean, we all have proper upbringings, okay, most of us. Okay, so if you do have a proper upbringing, the first thing is what is it that is right that I can do to put food on our table? If you can, if you can think out of the box, and which the economy or the situation will force you to, um, I started chat to cars four years ago and all through the four years that we've been running the system, it's been hectic. But in all of it, I've never, and I repeat, I've never walked alone. I've worked with a whole lot of South Africans, I've worked with a whole lot of Nigerians, I've worked with different nationalities. But South Africa, the team that I've had also have been very effective, they've been very helpful, and at the same time, the company is growing. So we're here to stay. We're doing business together, the economy is growing, and unemployment is being reduced, even if it's at a minimum. 
when Elvis Nyati, a Zimbabwe national, was bent to death earlier this year by a group of locals after he failed to show them his passport, it was a clear sign that migrant safety is not guaranteed anymore. According to political analyst Gideon Chitanga, if nothing is done, this xenophobic violence and sentiments will never stop. I think we are at the peak of xenophobia, uh, expressed in different forms, such as statements uh, from officials, public officials, labeling migrants as uh, foreigners. This, by implications, leads to them, the migrants, being targeted, removed from where they live, chased out, subjected to physical violence, excluded from medical access, jobs and employment. While these tensions continue to grow, Zimbabweans in South Africa fear that their days of staying in the country are numbered, as the government of South Africa will in 2023 terminate their permits. Many of them say they have nothing to go back home to as the economic and political wars in that country continues. Uh, they won't renew our permits and then we go back to Zimbabwe. What will, what will, how are we going to survive in Zimbabwe? Uh, there are so many people in Zimbabwe who are struggling to put bread on the table. We go back to Zimbabwe, what are we going to, to do in Zimbabwe? As the mobilization of violence against foreigners continues, there is need for action from the government to keep the scapegoating of migrants and refugees. Responding to ongoing tensions in the country, President Cyril Ramaphosa told Parliament that he strongly opposed targeting of foreigners. To address the influx of immigrants in the country, the Department of Home Affairs recently deployed border guards to intercept border jumpers. Bongani Siziba in Johannesburg.